to um, welcome our last speaker, Annika Breckman. Take it away, Annika. Well, hi, everybody. Um, my name is I work as a speech pathologist at Wagga Community Health Centre. And this work that I'm presenting is from my honours that I completed at the end of 2015. And I presented speech pathology national conference in May 2016. And then it was published in the International Journal of Speech Pathology in June this year. So, it's um, I'm very grateful to my supervisors, Monique and Michelle Lincoln for their support. Um, and I'm not going to go too deeply into some sort of cover that information. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about why I did my study. So there was a um, Senate inquiry into speech pathology services um, and it highlighted that there was a really big need for in rural and remote areas, but there was a serious clinician shortage in those areas, um, really hard to retrain, uh, retain and attract clinicians. Um, so what has been put forward as a solution is telepractice because clinicians can access those remote areas as previously discussed. Um, in the book, in Australia, our infrastructure is really improved practice um, and like the National Broadband Network and other um, infrastructure improvements make it much easier for people to access those sorts of services. In telepractice, evidence for its feasibility and efficacy has been There's some anecdotal evidence to say that some children prefer telepractice so they can stay in their own environment. National Broadband Network, as I said, is um, increasing the accessibility of high-speed internet. And lots of people use that we use in their everyday lives, like Skyping with friends or overseas. So even though our geography and infrastructure are quite well suited to this service delivery model, updates have been quite slow. Um, Wade et al. in 2014 described that the most important factor in determining the success of telepractice were clinician attitudes. Um, there's a widely held belief that face-to-face -face therapy and telepractice is inferior. Without telepractice positive clinician attitudes of telepractice reaching its potential, the service will become unsustainable. A major concern of clinicians who haven't had any telepractice experience is build working relationships over video. However, clinicians who have some experience of telepractice are often surprised at the ease with which they're able to build rapport even when mediated by a computer screen. So rapport, working alliance, these are just some of the words that speech pathologists use to talk about. In essence, it all draws down to the same idea relationship that's developed between the client, the clinician. In this study we use the term therapeutic alliance. Each pathologist know that therapeutic alliance is important. It's part of the competency-based occupational services and it's also part of the ICS environmental factors. But as it stands, there isn't any there wasn't any quantitative evidence to show that affects therapy outcomes. Um, in other similar dis disciplines like occupational there's evidence to say um, that rapport leads to therapy outcome measures, but we don't know whether that's And secondly, is this relationship really practice? So we've got to get a little bit deeper into this in 1979, Borden described the working or of agreement on the three concepts you can ask, bond, and goals. Therapeutic alliance can become more complex, like in speech pathology when we work with children or with adults, because of the third dimension of caregivers. So now it's not a Annika? Caregivers often drive. Yep. You're breaking up. Can I ring you and put this last bit on? Can you speak on the phone? Because this is breaking up. Yes. 
A double. Okay. Oh, she's on. <laughs> Annika, you're on voicemail. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Annika, hang up. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to call her. I don't think she should have to pay for the call. <laughs> yes, there you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's let's pump up the volume again. And okay, get the speaker down. All right. Can you say something, Annika? Yep. All right. Okay. So at least the people here can hear you. Um, so you can still operate your slides the same way. Um, just if you could tell us about Therapeutic Alliance briefly and move on. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Um, so what we were talking about was um, that the Therapeutic Alliance is formed by task, bond and goals. So you can kind of see on the slide how those link together. Um, and you can see that so if you've got a child who was working on fluency, then their goals would be fluent speech. The bond is the trust and confidence between the, um, the child and the clinician and the parent, and then the task are what you're, they're what you're doing to um, create it, to fulfill your goals. Um, so then to answer these questions, we needed a tool. Um, we used the service for myself for children, um, which hadn't been used in speech pathology before, but just before my paper came out, um, there was a paper that was released. Um, it was published by Avert and Al, and that um, showed that it has um, validity for speech pathology use. So we found, we used it and found it had a face that it's nice that it's been quite metrically analyzed, and it's a really good tool to use. Um, so it has, it's rated on a four point Likert scale, as you can see. And then it, um, these are some of the questions that get asked. So uh, about, you know, does the child like spending time with you? Um, is the child eager to leave? Does the child express positive emotion towards you? And next, these were our study questions. So these are the things that we looked at. Is the task valid? Um, is there a difference between clinician reported alliance in telepractice speech pathologists and face to face speech pathologists? And are speech pathologists who work in telepractice more comfortable with technology overall? Because that can often be put forward as, oh, I'm not a tech person, so I can't do telepractice. So these were our participants. So we had 14 telepractice speech pathologists and 18 face to face speech pathologists. And each reported on between one and three children and completed the task for those. Um, and they also answered questions about their level of comfort with technology. Um, they'd all seen their children for three to five sessions because we know that early rapport predicts later rapport. And so that was kind of an easy marker to cut it off at. Both groups had really varied caseloads. Um, there were lots of people who were working with speech and language disorders, but there were also people working with AAC. Um, and in telepractice, the most commonly used technology was Skype. So what did we find? Um, overall, no significant difference between face-to-face -face and telepractice groups across all research questions. So that was pretty exciting. And we found that um, the task R fitted the speech flow just by the user before. Um, so the task guard does have face validity to speech pathologists, and it's really nice that it now has proper validity, validity as well. Um, so there was a strong positive relationship between um, 
the speech pathologist's perceptions of the task and their ratings of overall rapport, and 84% agreed that it fitted with their understanding. One solution said, um, I saw the word ally and questions relating to the child's attitude working with the clinician is fitting really well with my understanding of what therapeutic alliance is. And both telepractice and face-to-face -face clinicians agree that the tasks are quite an appropriate tool for measuring rapport. And next, um, there was no significant difference between overall task R scores in the two groups. And this is probably the biggest finding, whoops, the biggest finding of the research to show that um, rapport is really similar in telepractice compared to face-to-face. -face. So if you look at these scores, um, the means are really close, the medians are exactly the same. There's no significant difference here. And overall, rapport was rated by both groups as quite high. And lastly, there was no significant difference in confidence or comfort with technology scores. So both groups of speech pathologists were equally confident with familiar technology and comfortable with unfamiliar technology. And there was no significant difference between those ratings. So it doesn't look like speech pathologists have um, different levels of tech ability and that's why they choose to do different sorts of telepractice. But it might be that speech pathologists who've had more telepractice experience underestimate their tech knowledge and speech pathologists who haven't overestimate that tech knowledge. If you think about the continuum of learning, speech pathologists who haven't had any telepractice experience are probably sitting more with the unknown unknowns and those who have probably more with known unknowns, so they know what they don't know or know how much they don't know. So what we can surmise is the task is a really promising tool for speech pathology and now that we know it's been validated it's an even more promising tool because it's very quick to administer and gives you a lot of um, quantitative data. Both telepractice speech pathologists and face-to-face -face speech pathologists provide really similar ratings that therapy alliance and rapport. And both groups of clinicians are equally confident and comfortable with technology. But like all studies, there were some limitations. The sample size was small, so while the findings are encouraging, further research is needed to investigate the validity for the task more widely in speech pathology, which has been done, which is now, as well as the effect and role of therapeutic alliance in other facets of speech pathology. Because speech pathologists could choose their own clients, there was some potential for bias there. However, the comparative design used aimed to minimise this. Um, because the information collected from participants about their clients was de identified, we couldn't compare the effects of client factors such as age or disorder on their therapeutic alliance rates, um, nor could we examine therapy settings or tasks. Um, Participants in the study highlighted the importance of the family in the, de in the development of rapport, and this is an area for further research, as well as the way telepractice modifies the role of speech pathologist as a coach for the child and facilitator on the other end. So our results suggest that therapeutic alliance is not negatively affected by telepractice. There's no evidence for concerns that quality of care is when we use telepractice, and in this regard, care is equivalent. There's strong potential to use the task to measure therapeutic compliance in speech pathology, and you can apply that in a range of practice areas, um, for example, in student learning. However, we need more research about how therapeutic compliance is formed in speech pathology. Because both telepractice clinicians and face to face clinicians reported such high levels of comfort with technology, it appears that this is not a main barrier. And from current research, participants suggested that they needed greater practical support in translating their known speech pathology skills into telepractice skills, such as how to modify activities rather than simply how to use the technology. Overall, this preliminary evidence is positive and opens the door for further research into the development of therapeutic alliance in speech pathology.